Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to use Game Maker's built in debugger. It is not an intuitive functionality, uh, it's kind of difficult to use, and I am only just now learning how powerful it is and how to actually utilize that. So, I wanted to share that with you because once you understand it, it helps making debugging your games extremely useful. So I figured out how to use this by when someone actually emailed me their project and I was going through it and I could not figure out exactly what the problem was and so I started fiddling around with the debugger trying to understand it because what I was figuring out just was not enough just by using like uh, show statements and things like that. So I have actually replicated that problem in this and if you recognize this project it's actually the dialog tutorial which I've uploaded recently. So they had a very unique problem, and we're going to go through, find that, and I'm going to show you how to use the debugger in the process of that. Now, first off, if you don't even know how to get to the debugger, it's actually right here. My guess is you've clicked on it by accident before. Uh, the green button runs the game, the orange one begins the debugger. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. The only change I've made is by putting in the error and making the room size a little bit smaller so that you can see the debugger and the gameplay at the same time. So here's the room. I'm going to put this right here. Oh, actually, I'll put it off to the side for a second. So here is the debugger. Now, uh, you have everything in your game. You have all your objects, your creation code, your scripts. Um, anything that has code inside of it is going to be over here on the left. And you can put these up in the middle and you can actually see all of the code. Now, one thing to notice is that there are two lines at the beginning. There is a uh, bracket here and what this uh, code actually is, and you don't normally see that when you're just looking at an object. So if you see in the debugger, it says line five is the problem. Uh, it might actually be like line seven because they've added two extra lines that you only see inside of the debugger. Now, over here you've got globals and locals, and we'll get to those in a second, but what I would recommend turning on is up here this little clock. It says turn on real-time updates, and you can see that the globals immediately shows up. So real-time updates shows you the global variables and their values for what they are, which is super useful. Now, to use the debugger uh, most efficiently, you need to put in something called a breakpoint. Now, a breakpoint is a part in your code that, when it gets to it, it will indicate to the debugger, pause everything, stop it, and then you can go through line by line, seeing where the problem is and how your variables change, and you can check to see if they're changing the way that you expect them to. So let me show you the error in this game. I go up to this guy and I press spacebar, and you can see here the globals have changed. And if I press spacebar again, it's going to come up with an error. So it says fatal error in step event 0, which this is the code behind it. Uh, trying to index a variable which is not an array at Gmail objects event 1, line 3. Now again, this is highlighted line 5, but it's actually line 3 because these two lines aren't normally in the code. So I'm trying to index a variable which is not an array. And now that's strange because this is the dialog, I've only changed one thing, and I know that it should be an array. But I'm going to go in, I'm going to open up my script dialog here, and to input a breakpoint you can right click on something and toggle breakpoint or just press F9. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint right here at the beginning of this script because I know this script is firing but something inside of this script is not making uh, my array, my message, into an array. So my message here is created and then it should be being made into an array either here or here. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in here and we're going to walk through this line by line and actually looking at the values that are coming out of the game itself. So I ran the debugger starting the game again. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on real-time updates. And I'm going to go up to this guy. 
and I press spacebar, and then it toggles the breakpoint right there. Okay. So the game is here. The game is currently paused. If I wanted to go back into the game, I could press this play button, or if any time during your game you wanted to pause it, you can press pause, or you can restart your game, although a lot of times I find that doesn't actually work, especially once it's crashed, it doesn't restart the game, so it's not that useful. But if your game isn't crashed, you can restart and you'll be fine. The, the, the buttons you need to see here are step in, step over, and step out. So step in is going one line down. So the next line of code that would be normally ran is what is going to happen. So I'm going to click on step in and you can see it goes to this next line. It doesn't do comments because GameMaker, any programming language, doesn't actually look at comments when it is running the game. So we go to with dialog box. Okay, I'm going to go, so it does that. So I'm going to step in into the next one. Now over here, is really neat. I can open these up and I can see the objects that are currently being used and interacted with. So I've got Sarah and it tells me instance obj Sarah and an instance an obj dialog box. I can come in and open up the built-in variables but those aren't going to be very useful uh, at least for what I'm looking for. If you ever wanted to look at the, the alarms or your, your sprite your directions where it should be all of the built-in variables are right here which is really fantastic but way too much information for what we want so we're gonna go ahead and do step in and then you can see as it makes the code for the object dialog box it updates it over here so it did max length and now max length is here so let's go on my max height and now my message and that's right my message is at least for this point, it's supposed to be one thing. So let's keep going on. So if array length, so it checks that a couple times, has choices is true. And you can even see over here in the globals, it becomes true. So then we go over here, it says if string height is greater than, then it's gonna make it into several lines of code. So let's see how that works. So it says that it is. So let's go on then. So it goes here, it gets the amount. It gets starting at, it goes to the for loop, which inside of this for loop is where it will turn it into an array, but it doesn't actually go through the for loop. And it doesn't hit the else statement because it was inside of the if already. And it goes straight to current text position, and then it moves on, and it actually jumps over to where it is next, and then it'll check inside of Sarah because every single step it's checking a bunch of code. But if we look at the game, it's paused still. But if I say, go over here and press play, and press space again, we have the exact same problem. But the problem is that it didn't actually make the line, my message, into an array for some reason. Now, when I was dealing with this, it took me actually like half an hour to an hour to figure this out because it was really strange. But let me fill you in really quick. If we look over here, uh, we have a variable called amount. And if we go back to script dialog, you can see that this for loop says i is zero. And while i is less than amount, then add in uh, indexes to this array of the dialog to show but amount is negative nine now negative nine is less than zero which means that this for loop it's gonna hit this for loop but immediately it's gonna recognize oh zero is already you know amount is already less than zero so we're not actually gonna do anything which means that it doesn't make it into an array here and it skips the else statement and goes straight to here. Now, I know exactly why that problem is. Because we come into dialog box and there's no sprite. When there's no sprite, the math that we were using inside of this script to, to calculate amount, which is sprite height minus 48, well, the sprite height is... Uh, not really a thing. So it gives it some bogus value and then you've got a issue. 
And that issue is that it comes up with a negative amount. And if you have a negative amount inside of that amount value, that amount variable, then you are totally thrown off. But if we come in here, delete this, and I'll actually add an existing sprite, which is the dialog box, back to where it should be. And we'll go ahead and run this with the debugger again, because it still has that breakpoint. And I'll show you that as variables are updated to different types, the debugger actually shows that as well. So we come in here, we play the game. And we'll go and talk to this guy. So again, it stops the game right here, because this is the dialog box. Now let's run through this again much quicker. So let's go ahead and look at this. Look at self. Uh, it has made max length, max height. It's got my message. Has choices is true. String height. Okay. So it says that string height is not greater because it's only going to display one. So it's going to go to this else statement instead. It hits that. And then all of a sudden it has an array here. So you have my message and it says it's an array. Now the error that we had before was that we were trying to index a variable that wasn't an array. So if we come back to the game, press play, now we have it working just fine. Everything shows up except that the room, I changed the room size, so that's for this specific tutorial, don't worry about that. But if, if we go back to here, uh, turn on real-time updates, you can see that the debugger has a wealth of information that once you understand how to use it, you can put in breakpoints to any part of your code you want, see every variable that you have in your game, both global and local, if at any time you pause this. So I'm playing the game, I've got it here. If I come in here and I pause it, well, uh, it's already, uh, sometimes it'll show you the local variables here and everything that you want to see as it is actually running. So if we come in here, I'll press play. That's why, it was just about to hit this. Uh, all these local variables now come up as well. And a really cool thing is if you can come over here to a global variable that is a part of an instance, you can right click, show instance, and then it will tell you where that global variable is. So this PC talking is of Sarah. You have her player speed, her variables here. But if I come in here to message giver, I can do instance, and then it says that's the robot, and then I can actually look at this array of his messages. I can see all of the text that I've written in there, and I can make sure it's exactly how it should be, and it's really, really powerful. The debugger does a lot of work, and it gives you so much information, but like I said at the beginning of this, it is not intuitive to know how to use. If you don't have... Uh, someone teaching you or you're not proficient at understanding manuals, then it can be really difficult to understand how to use the debugger well. So I'm hoping that that was helpful. This debugger in GameMaker is really powerful, gives you a lot of information, and with breakpoints you are able to find any error in your game that you, that you are running into because you can go line by line inside of your code and know exactly where things are happening and check every variable, every piece of data as it is being updated and made inside of your game. So when you know how to use this, finding errors, finding bugs becomes so much simpler. So that's what I've got for you guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I hope that this is useful. And as always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. Yeah.